Okay, so in front of me here is the two people's luxury get home bag set up that I was using, uh, which I am now scrapping. So I'm going to disassemble this and kind of talk about what I've done and why and what I thought was good ideas at the time. And which are probably still good ideas for somebody else, but not for me. So first things first, I'll get the secondary bag bags out of the way and then we'll talk about what's in the first bag. All right, so starting off with the first bag, attached to the outside is a Grail filter. So this is the Grail Ultralight. There's a new one out which has a drinking top and stuff on the top of it, which seems like a much better product. Would recommend that. Otherwise, I really like the Grails and what they do and how useful they are. Very good water purifiers. That will be coming with us in the next bag. Alright, so on the outside here, this is not a waterproof pocket. So, uh, what I've kept in here are a poncho. So, this poncho is uh, going to be coming across the new pack. This is a yellow waterproof bag, and this is actually medical. So, real quick, let's just run through what medical I included in this. Tourniquet, poncho with the silver inside, some Vaseline, uh, Israeli bandage, permanent marker. I have my IFAC and attached to the outside I have a knife, a compass slash torch slash light slash flashing beacon, tactical pen, so there's a pen as well as can break stuff. I have a full mirror and a magnifying lens in case you need to see stuff. I have a set of hand sanitizers, three 10 hour body warmers. I have quite a good little medical pack. It's got face things, heaps of bandages, band-aids, stuff like that, uh, which I've bumped out with. So this was a 92 piece kit, but I've bumped it out with a few extra things that you might find advantageous, right? So I've included three sheets of paper. Uh, so this is basically you fold this out into a work area if you're doing something. Uh, a bunch of actual band-aids because real band-aids cost more money uh, and are better, to be honest. Uh, face mask, gloves, and that was it for in here. And I've also included uh, some eye wash uh, into the kit because you never know if you need to wash your eyes. Right? Uh, inside of the IFAC, I have some drugs, gloves, swap tea, band aids, and gaffer tape. Uh, so I am quite heavy in band aids, but you know, if you're doing You'd be surprised how often you need them. I have a Nalgene type bottle, empty. I haven't stored anything in this one. And an associated cup. On the opposite side, I have, actually still at the top here, I have a three litre bladder that's in this top batch pouch, obviously empty. Nothing else in this top pouch, on that side pouch. On this side pouch, I have hiking poles. And a flip saw. Nothing else on the outside pouch here. Now comes the, the guts and the glory. So inside, this is a, an ultra light bag, so it only is top entry only. Uh, I have my Wooby. This is also my primary sleeping uh, device. So you fold it up into a sleeping bag if you're not using it as a jacket and provides a lot of warmth there. I have a 
wide brim hat that also has a mosquito net into it. Really good if you're trying to sleep. Uh, I have a regular hat and some useful things. I have some uh, sunscreen and insect repellent right at the top here. Charging cable right at the top. Headlight for, that goes under a cap and a cap clip. Uh, for extra cold weather sleeping, I have a uh, escape bivy. Uh, so this is one of the ones that will wick away moisture and things, which is quite useful. I have an emergency radio. So this is the uh, Clarko 500L for memory with the lithium battery. I like it because it's got the charge port at the back so I can use it. It's got a solar panel so I can use the charger. And it gets all shortwave FM radio, so that's a good bit of comms here right there. Uh, some bin liners, so the idea is that I would pack all of this stuff inside of the bin liners. Uh, so these are wheelie bin liners. Uh, I'm going to be keeping those as for the next set of kits. Alright, what do I got here? So inside of this blue bag, I have some prepping type gear. I have uh, some cord. I have a multi-tool, which is a hammer, knife thing. I quite like this. It's a little bit gimmicky, but I like having a hammer and a puller. Uh, I did forgot to include some nails in this kit, uh, but you yeah, know, there we go. Uh, solid fuel stove, cooking utensils, a Fred, baby wipes for hygiene, uh, a beefy, beefy bag, for hygiene as well, so that's a like a diaper that you can use. So I have a, a spork and knife combo, which is there, so in conjunction with the cooking gear, that's useful. Uh, a second biffy bag for a second unplanned toilet event. Good thing with the biffy bags is you don't have to use uh, go to the toilet uh, in a hole in the ground. You can take it out with you, you can pack it up. Uh, I've also included a tick remover with the Fred. Again, this is also a waterproof bag. All right, what else we got in here? All right, another waterproof bag. Let's see what I got in here. All right, so this is the sleeping mat and a pump. So I really like this device. Uh, this is a flex tail gear, tiny pump. It's a torch and a compressor pump. So it can blow up a mattress in 30 plus seconds and it can also suck out air from a mattress uh, to compress it back inside. And it's got a torch built into it, so it's a secondary torch. I really quite like it. Uh, it will be going on me on many hiking trips in the future. Uh, this is a inflatable mattress. Uh, uh, this is a, I did a lot of research and bought a couple of different ones. Uh, this one is a wider mattress and a taller mattress. So this is a four inch elevated mattress and it is very comfortable. Even if you're you know, overweight like I am and a bit of sore back problems, uh, it's quite good. What else do I have here? This is a collapsible pillow and the first night I slept on this collapsible pillow, I realized that inflatable pillows suck and it's no extra weight, but it's a lot of extra volume, which is again, the downside of this whole setup. Getting towards the bottom here. So I have a ground sheet for use underneath the mat. Uh, this is Tyvek, uh, which is really, really quite good at blocking off water and stuff coming down. I'm hoping this is all in frame. Down the very bottom of the bag, I have the two-person tent. Uh, again, this is a two-person tent. It uses those trekking poles, uh, comes with all of its guy ropes and things and pegs. So it's an off-the-shelf consumer product. Uh, in doing my research on these tents, they said that the first generation leaked. This is the second generation tent and I did some resealing on it. Uh, but it's quite light and small and packed in quite a nice area. 
and that should be everything in this main bag. Oh, right, one more thing. Uh, this is an inflating, a mattress inflator. Uh, so it's actually a waterproof bag that doubles as a an inflator. So you fold it up and push it in. What that does is it means that if you're having to blow into a mattress, you use this instead. So that way you're not putting water inside of your mattress from your air, uh, from your from your breath, and that way you're not going to freeze it. So all up, the sleeping gear is this, and it's not that much extra weight, you know. In terms of what I could use if I was going out in a slightly different setup was if I get rid of the tent and the lilo and just have the collapsible pillow, uh, this, 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 and this, and a couple of bin liners to use as a mattress. All of a sudden, you've got a much lighter setup, and off you go. Now that all that stuff's out of the way, these next two bags should take significantly less time to go through. So I'll start with the extra bag for my wife. So attached to the side here is an uncompressed uh, Wubi. Uh, this is a cheaper Chinese one uh, that fits my wife. I keep it uncompressed so that it doesn't lose its efficiency. If you keep some, a, a sleeping bag compressed for a long period of time, it does lose its capabilities. Uh, so that's it. As part of her bag, I'll just really quickly go through what I got on the outside here. Sorry, I call this her start bag. So inside it, I have another one of those silver reflective ponchos. A small med kit, a bunch of band-aids, sunscreen, insect repellent. Uh, so it's not much of a start kit, but it does it. It'll do a good job, uh, and you pocket most of that stuff. That med kit's actually quite good. It's got a, it's the dot point three, uh, and it's got a couple of bandages in it, uh, tape, blister stuff. All right, inside of the front pocket here. I have a uh, shamag. Uh, I think that's the only thing in this front pocket here. There's nothing in that one. All right, I have just mostly just thrown in here. Survival blanket, a two set of ponchos that you can use to build a shelter or wear as ponchos. Uh, escape bivy, single person. Uh, it doesn't have the advanced moisture wicking stuff that the other one does, but it works well. Uh, I have a Nalgene bottle, and inside of it, I have a, a Ziploc bag. And inside of that Ziploc bag, I have a beanie, gloves, and a change of socks. So a bit of warmth item. I keep it inside of a, a, a plastic bag, uh, sorry, a Ziploc bag, so that I can... Uh, protect the inside because if you get scratches on the inside of a bottle that's where all your bacteria is going to grow and live and cause your dramas later on. Uh, I have a typical fly net, uh, fly head net. I have an inflatable pillow for the air mattress and I actually have an air mattress. This is a night cat quite often Amazon is actually quite a good little unit because uh, it's my wife's bag, has some pads, a bunch of normal garbage bags, and that's it for this little bag. No food in this little bag because it's in the next one. Uh, the idea is, oh, and it actually does have straps on it, and I've put these D ring hooks on it so that I can actually clip it onto the front of my bag. If they had issues with the other pack, you might not be able to see it. So these little black D-rings here. I also, with these types of packs, I do something uh, with them when I buy them. So as soon as they turn up, I do a little add-on. Whereas every single pack I own, I've put these quick release clips on. Uh, so that way I can actually do other things with the straps. 
uh, costs a couple of extra dollars per bag and some time to get the correct clips and fasteners and things, but definitely do recommend doing that. I don't really see any other preppers talking about modifying general backpacks to do things. All right, so I'll move this stuff out of the way. So this is a shoulder bag. Its original purpose in life was uh, as a picnic set, uh, but mostly I liked it for its form factor, that it's got a couple of these belt buckles up here that I can use to attach to it. I think if I was gonna do what I was doing before again, I would actually be fastening off these uh, and pulling off them rather than off some little clip things that I had lying around. Uh, but overall, that was pretty good. All right, uh, inside of here, yeah, I'm gonna get a final weight of this. I don't think I have a final weight of that. 5.59 kilos. All right, so inside of here, I have, this is an insulated compartment here at the back. I have a belt. I have an insulated bag, which I keep all the food and stuff in. Uh, nothing else in the back here. So in shot find the insulated food bag. I have the food. So um, long life rations, chocolate bars, candy, muesli bars, some meat, some single serve stuff, uh, another day's worth here. The similar thing, food, sugars, chocolate bars, uh, fairly common food pack. These are odour-proof bags so that I can prevent mice and things from smelling it out in my car and also will serve as water holding and water carrying bags if needed. Right. So the extra belt is what you're about to see for, for now. Um, so inside of the front main pouch, that opens up. I have my two ammo pouches. Right. So these clip can clip onto a belt. And again, I've got these uh, attach points here for if I'm attaching a bag or something to hold up my belt rather than using the side straps. So inside each of these, I contain important stuff like matches and lighter, my shamag, Map sugar, chili flakes, emergency food, so some rations, fire lighting gear, uh, the pot holder for the one that I just had to turn it into a pot, uh, some ballistic glasses, and also them goggles, so they'll prevent sand and dirt getting in your eye, smoke, all that sort of stuff, which is important. Compass, the lid for that pot. So the idea is that if I was starting to move, I would actually take these pouches out of this bag, which is kind of hiding them, and attach them to the belt of that backpack. Inside of this one, I have my start bag. I have baby powder for feet and things. I'm actually going to replace that with a proper foot powder. And inside this start bag, I have drugs, very useful, tape in case I need to fix something, a, a better mask than normal, toilet paper. So these are coffee filters. These are used to filter water uh, before you put in a saline. Basically, it's a pretty nice pack of them. They're light. You can burn them or find some other things. Uh, Batteries for the torch, which I keep separated. Uh, some multivitamins in the form of a drink additive. One thing I do like with the Grail filter is that you can purify your water and then put one of these in it, in the clean drinking side without affecting the filtration process, uh, which is good. Uh, measure torch. So all of this stuff would come out and go in my pockets if I was starting or on my person. Uh, a pencil and a permanent marker.
toothbrush, toothpaste, floss. Uh, even if you don't carry this with you, doing it before you start hiking is a, a good thing to do. And a set of dog tags with my wife's phone number and my date of birth in case someone finds my body. Alright, well that's those two extra packs. As I said, that's quite a luxurious setup uh, of things to take with you. I'm going to cut it down again, go back to kind of what I was doing. Alright, so that wraps up the second set of bags, uh, the additional bags that I was carrying with me. Uh, mostly this second bag was to contain food and things, which I could obviously fit into that main pack. Uh, the top had a bit more extra room to go, but I liked having it weighted on the front of me there. But overall, it's taking up too much volume. Uh, I'm not going to be able to keep that in the car all the time. So I'm going to pack this stuff away into boxes, categorize it properly, and then kind of pull it back out again into a smaller bag. Very close to what I did in video one, I think. Last up is the discussion around clothes. So what I have here is the clothes that I keep packed around my bag that if I was going to start the walk home, I would get changed into. Uh, so first up over here, I have a set of gaiters. These are bite proof gaiters so that if I got bitten by a snake or a snake tried to bite me, uh, I would at least have protections up to my knees. Gators are also very useful if you are crossing country that doesn't have a predetermined trail. Uh, quite useful for keeping your legs protected from sharp sticks and things. I once had a stick come and jab me in the leg uh, and cause me to bleed and I couldn't walk for several days. It was very painful. Right, inside of these Ziploc bags I have a set of thermals, a set of gloves, a set of uh, merino wool socks and a set of long john underpants uh, with moisture absorption and things. Of note for the merino wool socks, you fold them out and over the top of your boots so that it has some moisture wicking out. Uh, and with the baby powder or proper foot powder, you're doing good. In terms of my other layers, uh, I have... So this is a set of hiking pants. What's good about these, they're lightweight and airy and you actually can unzip the legs and have shorts instead of pants depending on how hot it is. Being Melbourne, the weather is not great. Uh, the reason why these pants made it into the get home bag instead of general rotation is the colour. I, if I sat on something, which I did, and it made it look like I've crapped myself because there's a brown patch at the very back of them. They're not very flattering to wear. And one of my favorite recent inventions is, this is called a sun hoodie. Uh, so hoodie generally hooks over your arm, leg. It is very lightweight, very good at moisture absorption. Doesn't stink if you wear it for several days in a row. Has these nice little thumb hooks where if you put it on. When I would start a hike, this is what I would put on as my base layer. And any additional clothes that I had like Maybe I had a pair of jeans or a shirt would be my camp clothes. All right, with the wrap up here of the clothes, that concludes what I would take with me in my deluxe hiking style get home bags. And as a during, if you're going to be using it for hiking and things, I think it's a very good loadout. Uh, and I can't wait to test it for an actual proper multi-day hiking trip. So thanks for watching. Have a good day. As I go to pack up all this stuff, I'm realizing that I really miss my webbing. Trying to balance things and have it all weighted out properly. I used to carry significantly more weight, but on less, I think, issues. I mean, this wasn't all that heavy all up. This was under 20 kilos, including my wife's stuff. So weight-wise, I think I did very well, but just volume-wise, it's a bit too much space.